Sports, the highlights of all the big sports stories of the week. With Chris Schenkel. And Jim Leaning. Tillis Sports is presented by your Plymouth Valiant dealer who sells and services the greatest Plymouth ever built. And Valiant, the compact nutty engineered by Chrysler Corporation. Beautiful D.C. Stadium in Washington hosts the 32nd All-Star Classic, and from all pregame indications, this should be one of the most colorful of all time. A sellout crowd of more than 45,000 is packed into the park, anxious to see if the National League stars with a lineup of veterans can match the awesome strength of the American League sluggers. President John F. Kennedy takes time out from his executive duties to relax and enjoy baseball at its best by the game's outstanding performers. Luis Aparicio, the super glove man from the Chicago White Sox, will again be at shortstop. Mickey Mantle on your left, and Jim Gentile provides some of the batting power for the American League. Willie Mays, the giant superstar, has been a regular in this extravaganza since 1954. Roberto Clemente, last year's batting champ, enters today's contest with one of the hottest bats in baseball. The outcome of any baseball game is usually decided by pitching strength, and neither team is lacking in this department as Don Drysdale of the Dodgers gets the nod to start for the National Leaguers, while Detroit's Jim Bunning opens for the junior circuit. With one away, Roberto Clemente drives a two-strike pitch down the right field line to start the ball rolling for the National League in the first inning. First base coach Casey Stengel must be thinking, if only he had one or two Clemetes and his Mets, life in the National League would be happier. Bunning retires on a pop foul, and Orlando Cepeda follows suit with a rainmaker that catcher Earl Batty puts away to retire the side. Don Drysdale is mowing down the opposition until Luis Aparicio gets hold of an offering in the bottom of the third and drives the ball between Willie Mays and Roberto Clemente for a stand-up triple. No one out Drysdale's in real hot water, but he retires pinch hitter Lee Thomas on a pop-up to Dick Grote. The speed bowling right-hander strikes out Billy Moran to bail himself out of trouble in the third with no score. There's no score as curve bowling Camillo Pasquale is greeted with a single off pinch hitter Stan Musial's bat to ignite a spark in the National League six. Stan receives a rousing ovation for his timely hit and thereby extends his streak of all-star games to 22. Maury Wills comes in to run for Musial. The league's leading base dealer wastes no time engineering another theft, so it's left up to Dick Grote to bring the flying Wills across with the first run of the game. Grote, who's having a fine year at the plate, delivers a bingle up the middle off Pasquale, and Wills rides home. Minnesota's ace right-hander now faces that terrific bad ball hitter, Roberto Clemente. The Pirates' water belts out his third hit of the game, sending teammate Grote to second. Willie Mays puts the good wood to the ball, but Roger Maris draws a beat on it in deepest center field. Dick Grote tags up after the catch and advances to third, while Clemente moves on to second. Orlando Cepeda bounces one down to Rich Rollins, who makes a fine play to first base, but Dick Grote is able to score, and the National Leaguers have two runs with two outs. Tommy Davis, the Major League's top hitter, can't get this smashed by Rich Rollins, who makes a great grab and throws the Dodger flash out at first. But the damage is done as the American Leaguers bat in their half of the sixth, with Bob Perky now pitching for the National League. Rich Rollins hits a bleeder down the right field line, and the Twins rookie has his first all-star base hit. Another newcomer to all-star competition, Billy Moran, comes through with a single to center, advancing Rollins to third and giving Ralph Houck's troops their first serious threat of the game. Roger Maris puts plenty of power behind his swing, but Willie Mays isn't about to let this one get away. Rich Rollins tags up on the sacrifice fly and scores easily to break the ice for the American League. 
It's a two-to-one game going into the visitors' half of the eighth. Cleveland's Dick Donovan pitches to switch hitting Maury Wills, who drops a Texas link signal into center field. The Giants' Jim Davenport wastes little time connecting for a base hit off Donovan. When Rocky Calavito elects to try to catch Wills rounding second base, he throws behind the little speedster, and Maury just keeps on going to third. While the fans continue to hum about the base daring of Maury Wills, Philippe Ballou of the Giants makes his debut with a fly ball that Leon Wagner corrals in right field. Wills tags up and slides safely across the dish for the game's final run to give the National League a three-to-one decision. Juan Marichal of the Giants picks up the win and gives the National Leaguers a chance to tie the All-Star Series at 16 games apiece when they meet at Wrigley Field, Chicago. Yes, the good old summertime. But here's what time it is at your Plymouth Valiant dealers. S A V E it's save time. Time to save money on Valiant. Your Plymouth Valiant dealer is out to sell all Valiants immediately at big savings to you. A Valiant costs less than other compacts. See how much less than Falcon, Corvair, and up to $473 less than Olds F85. Every Valiant has a Husky 101 horsepower Economy 6, a rugged rust-resisting unibody, torsion bar suspension, a six-passenger family sedan with lower-than-ever list prices and consistently high resale value. So see your Plymouth Valiant dealer this week and save. The second All-Star game of 1962 is being played in Wrigley Field, Chicago. Thus far in the long series, the American League has 16 victories to the National League's 15. There has been one tie. Billy's right-hander, Art Mahaffey, is hit hard by pinch hitter Pete Runnels in the third inning. The ball sails into the left field seat for a home run. A surprise blast by Runnels, who's not considered a long ball hitter, pulls the American League even at 1-1. With two out, Rocky Calavita slams a long drive to left. Tommy Davis drops the ball for an error. Billy Moran, who had been aboard, is being sent home. The relay from third baseman Ken Boyer to Dell Crandall is perfect, and Dell applies the tag to deprive the American League of the lead run. And Wagner, the Los Angeles Angels, powers a happy pitch over the right field wall for a home run in the fourth. Earl Batty, all with a walk, precedes Wagner around the bases. Rocky Calavita packs away a three-run homer later as the American League avenges the loss it suffered in 1962's first All-Star game. Final score, American League 9, National League 4. Telesports has again been brought to you by the man who sells and services Valiant, the compact nobody beats for value. And the greatest Plymouth ever built. Your Plymouth Valiant dealer. Be sure to tune in Telesports next week for highlights of Pro Football's Curtain Razor, the game between the NFL champion Green Bay Packers and the College All-Stars.